Hello, and it's a warm welcome to the 2009 Handsbury FIM Superbike World Championship with the second round of this year's series coming from the LaSalle International Circuit in Qatar, the natural gas-rich state in the Arabian Gulf. Well, the 14-round championship got off to a cracking start in Australia two weeks ago with a win in the opening race for Ducati Xerox rider Noriyuki Haga from Japan. And then a sensational rookie triumph in race two for the Texan Ben Spies on the factory Yamaha R1 machine. And the opening round had thrown up a few extra surprises as well, with Max Biaggi competitive on the Aprilia RSV4 bike, and Max Neukirchner and Yukio Kagayama picking up a couple of podiums for Suzuki. The championship appears to be evenly balanced this year, and with all seven manufacturer teams fielding competitive bikes and top riders, together with a handful of quality private squads, the outcome of the races is anything but certain. At least that's what we thought after the results of Phillip Island. So it's off to the desert circuit of LaSalle to find out how the second round would pan out. Last time round we had a look at Aprilia's return to World Superbike. But this week we focus on the other European manufacturer who have entered the championship this year, BMW Motorrad. The German team are certainly making a big effort in a series where they have no racing experience and are already progressing in leaps and bounds. We sent our man, technical expert and racer Steve Martin, down to the BMW pit garage to take a look at the new S1000RR machine. Hi, I'm Steve Martin. This week's technical feature is on the all new BMW S1000R. As you can see, it's a completely German made machine and uh, come with me and we'll have a close look at it. Let's have a close look at this race bike starting with the rear end. Acropovic exhaust system, titanium pipe, custom made swing arm to suit the rider's needs, fully carbon fibre fairings, aluminium fuel tank. Inside this engine here there's lots of special parts to give the BM a lot of mid-range torque and a lot of top end power. Come around with me and we'll have a look on the other side. Let's have a look at this side of the machine and see what we can see. The main thing is the left handlebar here. You've got your traffic light control system, which uh, is your traction control, pit lane speed limiter, and also adjustable engine braking. In the hands of Troy Corsa, we've seen a little bit of the potential of this machine. With BMW behind this project, I really believe that later on in the year, we're gonna see some podiums and possibly some wins. And now a quick look at the LaSalle International Circuit. It's the fifth time World Superbike has come to the Qatar track, which is located some 30 kilometers outside the capital, Doha. It's the only circuit in the region with homologation licenses for car and bike racing, and was built at a total cost of almost 60 million US dollars. It measures 5.380 kilometers, has a main straight of just over 1,000 meters, and 16 turns, 10 right and 6 left. Well, the new Super Pole knockout formula was proving to be a massive success, with excitement all the way through the 50-minute session as teams and riders pondered over strategies and tyre choice. Noriyuki Haga managed to move up to a fourth-place slot for Ducati Xerox, following two disappointing qualifying sessions. The rest of the front row had a similar look to Australia, with Max Biaggi once again qualifying his RSV4 machine third for Aprilia. While Jakob Smertz went two places better, on a private Guandolini Ducati 1098R to move into second on the grid. But after dominating the two qualifying sessions, Ben Spies powered to his second pole in two races. The 24-year-old American lapping the 5.3-kilometer circuit in a time of 1 minute 57.280 seconds, 
That's almost eight tenths of a second quicker than Troy Corsa's circuit record. So with Spies on pole, let's join our commentary team, Jonathan Green and Steve Martin, for the start of race one. There's some contact there for two guys. And that's one of the Stiggy boys three. going down. And Brendan Roberts. Brendan Roberts. So run off as well. Now, leading the way is Max Biaggi, but here comes Harge. He gets in the slipstream. Will he pop out and take the lead? Looks like he might. They cross the line now. Here comes Harge. Can't quite do it, but Spees put in a 159.5, the fastest lap of the race so far. So Spees is on his way. Fabrizio oh. is out. Wow, they're going down like flies. Ten pins, they're going down. Yeah, let's have a look. Ooh, well, good to see he's OK, because he walked away from that, but at one point it didn't look too good. Yeah, hard to say what happened there, but that's on the exit of the corner, so it could have been a bit of a high side. Fabrizio had been in seventh place. That moves Sykes up to seventh, and Burns still in the top six. And, and there goes comes Harga. Harga. Yep, he just upped the notch, and here comes Spees as well. They're all going for it into the first corner, and Spees has taken Harga just when we thought he was going to take the lead. So Spees moves into second place ahead of Noriyuki Haga, or does he? He's done it. He's there. Now that we've seen that happen, I expect Spees to go pretty much straight away past uh, Biaggi, if he can do it as well. Wow, what a fascinating race. And Haga looking a little bit uh, unsettled by that because Haga looked as though he was going to take the lead of Bobble from Biaggi almost the last Spees through, but not quite. What a great race. Six to go. And oh, he takes through. it. Great move by Ben Spees. Good morning. Four-time world champion, out of my way. That was a little bit of help there by Max Biaggi. Biaggi ran just a little bit wide there, and uh, Ben got through. But Ben is so good. Look at him now, really getting the power down. Now he's now, going for it. Now he's going to go for it. And really. it's obvious by the body movement of Ben Spees that he wants to get away from these two as quickly as possible. Harga senses it too, and he wants to get past Biaggi because he's going for victory. He's the championship leader, remember. And Harga looks and again up the inside, he's oh, through. Nice move. It's not over yet, though, because Biaggi gets up the inside. No. Great move, and Hargus holds on to second place. Spees is moving away at the front. These three have battled all the way, but Ben Spees, leader of every session so far, is starting to show his dominance. And look at Aprilia watches on as Harga stays with Biaggi all over the back of him. They cross the line. Spees does a 2 0, zero one, and he's some six tenths quicker than Biaggi and Harga ahead. Top speed of 3.08. Meanwhile, Biaggi does 3.30. Here's the chasing battle. Kianari here with Jonathan Ray. And this is a battle for eighth position at the moment. But you can see it's close between uh, Kianari, Ray, Corsa in the top ten. Laconi's just behind him. But uh, there is Laconi, number 55. And a good battle here, we've hardly seen any with four to go, and Kianari looking for some points on the Honda. Three to go, and here comes Harga, down the main straight, the power of the Ducati goes past the Aprilia, into second place, but Biaggi on the brakes is strong and holds on, no he doesn't. Not this time. Harga stays second. Here. And Harga's now taking him to an excellent one. There's Biaggi, there's Biaggi in the slipstream, pulls past, it. and he's up the inside on the brakes. Final lap now, and is Biaggi where he wants to be, or will Harga be more comfortable? Harga going back up the inside, it's neck and neck between these two. Spees is on his way to another victory, but who's going to take second place? Will Biaggi be happy with third, or is he going to go for second? I think he's going to try for second. <laughs> I'm going to say, neither are they going to be happy with third, that's for sure, not after this battle. They want it, and they want it bad, and I think these two know that they've got a target on their back, because one of them 
is going to be right up there at the end when they get to Portomayo, and I think they're going to be happy. They know that they've got to take on okay. Spies all year. Okay, now's an opportunity for Biaggi, and he takes it up the inside, but not there. That He's looking there. That's You can see that he's confident in the brakes compared to Hager. So, uh, gets a good drive out. He's not going to be able to attack him into here. Spees again, increase the lead, 1.8 seconds, but it's all about second place or third. Right, we go through this flip-flop, if Biaggi can get a good drive and he has. out of this next right-hand corner, he can dive up the inside and try and block pass here, but not close enough. This is where Hag is strong. Where else can he go? Well, he's going to have to more or less uh, sit in line for these next few really fast right-hand corners because Hager just gets so much more drive out of that corner. Look at the gap that Hager's pulled there, but Biaggi makes it back up through these rights. Look at him, he's already back on the, the rear end now. Final lap here, race one, Losel. It's been intriguing indeed, but once again, the class of Ben Spees has shown, and the man from Longview, Texas, is in for the long haul, and he's headed for the title in his first year. He starts to wheelie, he starts to showboat. This race is in the bag for him. It's now a question of who's going to take second. He'd be happy if it was Biagi, because Haga has a 15-point lead going into this race. Out of the last corner comes Ben Spees, and the American has done it in style, back-to-back -back victories. Yeah, it was an uh, extremely tough race. We uh, had an okay start and I uh, had to come through a couple people and, uh, and then we got to the back of Nori and, and Max and it's funny we were all three strong in, in separate parts of the track and, and uh, was lacking just a little bit off the last corner and was very hard to, uh, to make the pass but once we uh, got the pass done I had to put my head down or they were going to come back by and uh, just was able to keep it clean made a couple mistakes you know in the last couple laps but was uh, pretty clean and it was good enough today but now it's uh, I'm sure everybody's going to go study the computer and try to make their bikes faster for the next race and uh, it's going to be a good one and that lap 12 you took both of them uh, to, to move from third to first place yeah I mean it was uh, Nori was kind of looking up the inside of Max and let off a little bit early and that was my chance to get by him and and uh luckily you know max just kind of barely ran a little wide and i was right there to to capitalize and it was uh it was good from there on and just kept my head down and and uh yamaha r1 was uh you know flawless so win number two of the year went to Spees, who took both biaggi and haga on lap 12 to seal his victory there was a great scrap for the runner-up slot between the other two, with the Japanese rider getting the nod. While for Aprilia, it was their first podium since returning to World Superbike. Neukirchner and Fabrizio had disappointing races, both riders crashing out. So now let's follow the second race of the day, with Spies looking to be the man to beat. Once again, we join Jonathan Green and Steve Martin in the commentary box. and away we go and it was three men on the front row there what has happened let's find out we will find out as very soon indeed but once again a brilliant start by Biaggi he tips it in and takes the whole shot it's close though right behind him but Biaggi leads the way on the Aprilia and Hager just went through up the inside too then on Ben Spees but Ben goes up no he tries to make a move up the inside but it's uh, Biaggi followed by Hager Spees and Yakov Schmerz is the man that seemed to disappear from the front row. We'll keep you up to date with that, but it is Biaggi who leads. Here comes Spies. He doesn't want to get bulked in early on as he was in the first race. Corsa got a good start too. Didn't quite see his position, but I saw him jump off the line. It was a really good launch. Shane Byrne got away well. The British champion is chasing the American champion in fourth place. Here we go. Spies looking aggressive, looking for a way past, but Corsa is showing him the way. That's because Corsa got past him. It's Sykes, in fact. That's the, yeah, we, we, for some reason, we suddenly thought that Spies had disappeared. He hasn't. He's right there. And, in fact, Spies is now all over Biaggi. But Sykes it is who lost out to Corsa. There is Tom Sykes. That is a much better start by Sykes, too. Like, basically, he hasn't got a lot of guys between him and the front guys now. He just needs to, if he can, get past Corsa as soon as he can. Look at the mid-corner speed of Corsa there. Absolutely fantastic. We'll be good to see now. Also, keep an eye on... Um, the BMW versus the Yamaha the straight line speed. That doesn't look like it's that Thundering down the main straight again. Noriyuki Hager has increased the lead now to half a second ahead of Biaggi, who's in real pressure from speeds. And Corsa still holding on to fourth position. 
Still quite a gap, a bit of work for Kianari to do, but that Honda is super quick down the straight. We saw it shoot past Sykes' Yamaha and Burns' uh, Ducati last time round. So, uh, Chance for Spees here. He's in the slipstream. He's caught right up with Harger. They've dropped Biagi slightly, and here comes Ben Spees. Big Ben is chiming once again. Yamaha and Harger must be wondering whether he's made the right choice because Spees and that Yamaha have been superlative in terms of their start to this season. And look, here we go again. One right in the Aprilia, he's got the run, he's got the line in the Aprilia, booms by and into second place. But will he be able to catch that man's speed? Yeah, Biaggi seems to be better under brakes than Hagen. He was in race one, but nothing's changed for race two. So let's see what's going to happen now. Can Max make the most of this and catch back up? Said, well, uh, Spees, we can do nothing. <laughs> and basically that was an admittance at nine o'clock this morning that they knew that they just couldn't stop the freight train that is Ben Spees. Yeah, I mean, look at that gap now. Let's just have a look at this time round. 59-2 last time. 59-2 this time. Harger dives into second. Ahead of Biaggi. Biaggi will try to outbreak him, but he can't. Kianari still waiting. Last lap of 59-9. The gap between Biaggi, Harger, and Spees is getting closer in the championship, but the big news story of this weekend is Ben Spees is headed for the double on the final lap and will close the gap between himself and Harger to 10 points. Unless Biaggi changes that, and he could do right now. Into second place goes Max Biaggi. Will he hold it tight enough not to let Harger through? Yeah, yeah, he's held it tight. He knows what to do. He's a smart man. All he's got to do now is keep on blocking. This is the worst case scenario for Harger. This is perfect for Spees. Definitely. Biaggi's an old fox, he's going to like make it really, really hard. If Harger's going to go past now, it's going to have to be a desperate move, and that could take them both out. We've seen it happen before. One of Harger's options is to break into here, but to be honest, look at Max, he's really given it everything he's got. He wants second place. Harger's not going to get him there. So then, Ben Spees on the final lap. Greenville Avenue in Dallas. Sixth Street in Austin. Keep the bars open late. You've got some celebrating to do because Ben Spees is here to take the title in front of the big boys. There's a long way to go yet, but already he's showing the signs of trying to take a world title in his rookie year. What a sensation that would be. Following in the footsteps of the greats, Scott Russell, Colin Harger. Edwards, John Kaczynski. Harger, Harger, Here we Harger. go, Harger's through. He's going up the inside. Go on, Nori. Biaggi trying to hold on to it, but Harger's got second place for now. Biaggi's going to do everything in his power to get past. It's not over yet between these two. Don't forget Kianari lurking there in the background as well. Spees is on his way. This is one heck of a last lap for second place. This is Biaggi's last chance. Now. A look over the shoulder. Ben, there's no one there. Don't worry about it, son. Keep going. Head down. Bum up. Harger holding on. An important second place for the championship leader. He needs this. He's got it at the moment. And he will take second place. But big Ben Spees takes three in a row. Texas are top again. And Ben Spees. He set a really good pace the first few laps, and and uh, from the first race we we were lacking just a little bit of acceleration, and it was hard to to race with him, and and uh, put my head down and and tried to close up, and once I got got to him, I just tried to keep the same the same rhythm going, and uh, passed him, and and just uh, you know put my head down as hard as I could for the the next ten laps, and was able to open up a gap and and uh, brought it home, but it was. Uh, it was a hard race. It was a better race for me than the first one, just because I could, you know, concentrate on on my lines and and uh, ride my race. But uh, yeah, it was a good race, and Nori and, and Max rode really good. And it's hard making up points on him when he keeps finishing second. But you know, he deserves it. And uh, you know, hopefully, when we go to Valencia and uh, you know, be up front again. So it's a perfect weekend for your Super Pole, fastest lap, new lap record, and two wins as well. Yeah, it was uh, it was a good week, and they're they're not always like that, but we'll uh, we'll take them when they come. So, another win for Ben Spees, the American, and his Yamaha rapidly emerging as the strongest combination in this early part of the season. The race two podium was identical, with second place going to Haga ahead of Biaggi. Kionari scored an excellent fourth and fifth went to Tom Sykes, while Neukirchner just got the edge over Nakano in a photo finish.
quick look at the standings. Noriyuki Haga comes away from Qatar, still leading the table, but he's now got Spies just 10 points behind. They've opened out quite a gap on Neukirchner in third on 40 points and Biaggi in fourth on 38. The second round of the Supersport World Championship was the supporting event at La Salle, and the race proved to be a battle royale once again, with the Hondas and Yamahas in the thick of the action. Kenan Safoglu had won the opening round, but it was Britain's Cal Crutchlow who took the pole position on his Yamaha R6 machine, with Eugene Laverty second for Park Algar Honda, and Safoglu and Pitt making up the rest of row one. Let's join our regular commentary team of Jonathan Green and Steve Martin for the Supersport action. And go lights and away we go. Laverty gets away well. And so too to Safoglu and Pitt. McCoy got a good start too. He's up there in the top four or five. And tipping it into the first corner. Crutchlow makes it though and he leads the way. Laverty's there on the outside too. And someone's off. Well, luckily not off, but at least out. Crutchlow leads, but not for long. Look at this. Looks as though Eugene Laverty's already picked it up and taken the lead for the Park Elgarty. It's going to be Laverty and Crutchlow as it has been for so long. But right behind them, the two Hondas. Side by side, look at this. And here comes Pitt. Yeah, Pitt's, Pitt's in a good position right there at the moment. He's lining up. Let's remember that Keenan Sofoglu had quite a few problems in practice. So I would say he's going to take it a little bit quietly in the first few laps like he did at Phillip Island just to get a bit of heat into his front tyre. Eugene Laverty leads the way. Now he hasn't been caught out. He's caught Crutchlow out here and got up the inside into third place. Crutchlow looks like looking back up the inside, but he's not going to be able to do it. So, Pitt leads. Safoglu about to join him. He's in third at the moment. He's gone past Crutchlow. Last four laps from Pitt. A 2.030 is best, but he's consistent, and that's the key, as I said with him. It's the most dangerous situation right now. Gets it. Got it. And done. nicely done. So, classic manoeuvre. Meanwhile, Laverty are back into third. Yeah, good move. And he's just got a bit of an inside edge on Pitt, too, but not this time. Cal Crutchlow hanging on there too. You've seen 10 of the 18 laps. Who is your money on? Sofoglu. Right. Keenan Sofoglu is just starting to peek out already a bit of a gap. <laughs> I think once he's got his confidence, he's got his confidence up in the first half of the, the race, he can really push. He's either going to win, or dare I say it, he's not going to finish. You can see, by, if you watch the guys down the straight, when they break, you can see the front of the bikes drop. But that's obviously when they hit the brakes. Pitt usually is the last guy to make the front of his bike drop. Not that time, really. Check the times, and it's all pretty equal. 2.032, 2.034, 2.038 by the top three men. Crutchlow was actually the fastest as all of them, at 2.031 in fourth place. Crutchlow now winding himself up to have a go in the last five. Time running out, though, now. Oh, there goes Pitt up the inside. Pitt can't quite Not do there. it. That's where Safoglu took him a couple of laps ago. Luigi Lamini hanging on there for dear life now. This will be a famous victory. OK, it's pretty hard to do anything into this next corner. But the idea is to do it where you least expect it. Lamity really nice and quick through here. Hold tight on the exit so they can't get by. Flat out through here. Next into the next right. Push as hard as you can. Andrew's going to have a chance up into this next left-hander if he just can outbreak, do a block pass. But it's he not can't close enough. It. No, but this is where Andrew's strong. He can accelerate hard out of here, and we saw him last lap round. He out. Oh, what a moment there for Lavin. He's lost some ground there. He has. This is Pitt's Pitt, chance. Pitt's here it is. This is the race. All in one. Pitt goes for it. Takes the lead. Lavity will have to hold up. But does Pitt run wide? No. Last chance for Lavity. Three corners to go. Pitt is so strong in these sorts of positions, he won't be feeling the pressure. Laverty might make a lunge. Here he goes. Not here, not here. He's going to do it. Oh, he's got two chances. He's going to do it into the next corner, but Pitt pulls out a bit of a gap look there. Look at Crutchlow going on to the AstroTurf. Don't do that, Cal. And Sofoglu looks up the inside. Can't do it. We know how... Oh, Sofoglu is wide. Oh, yeah. oh. Crutchlow almost falls off as well, but Crutchlow moves at the third. Can Laverty take him on the slipstream? He's got him. He's got him. He's here got him. Go. He's got a good drive. I this is it! Laverty takes victory! I enjoyed it a lot and uh, I just have to say thank you to the Park Algar Honda team. It was a, a fantastic race. The Park Algar Honda was very fast and Andrew's uh, gear just suited one part of the track better than me and he was able to scrape through. But 
in the end the, the bike was very fast and I was able to go past on the f start and finish fit so I'm very pleased but I, f I feel this isn't my victory, this belongs to Craig Jones after all the work he did last year in, in getting the team to where they are now. Well, unbelievable stuff from Eugene Laverty who took the win from Pitt in a sprint finish to the line. The Irishman dedicating his victory to the late Craig Jones whom he replaced in the Park Algarve team. And Crutchlow taking third after Safoglu's mistake on the final lap. The first Supersport podium for Cal in only his second race. So, with three wins in the opening four races, Ben Spies is sweeping all before him in World Superbike. And on this form, for the rest of the field, it's going to be very difficult indeed to keep up with him. But it's early days yet, and anything can happen as we head towards the European rounds. Join us again for more World Superbike action in a few weeks' time from Valencia in Spain. This has been Julian Thomas reporting from Qatar. Bye for now and see you soon.